Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to create a self-hosted integration runtime in Azure Data Factory. If you're new to my channel, I'm Reis Ang, and I make videos about Microsoft Azure and data engineering. Stay tuned. First of all, what is a self-hosted integration runtime? It is essentially a compute resource like virtual machine that's used by Azure Data Factory to perform data integration jobs. And that means like copying data from the source into a Azure Data Lake, for example. And the reason why we need a self-hosted integration runtime is because when data source is located in a private virtual network or on-premise network, then the built-in Azure integration runtime that is provided by Azure Data Factory won't be able to have access through that network. So we have to create a separate integration runtime, a VM that is able to go through that network and do the job, the integration job. Welcome to my Azure portal where we start the demo. I already have a resource group created, so I'm not going to create a new one. If you haven't had one of these resource groups, please do create one. And if I go to my resource groups list, I have demo. This is what I'm going to use. In my resource group, I also have created an Azure Data Factory. I assume you know how to create it. If you don't know how, just check my other Azure Data Factory video at the beginning to help you out. Okay, I'll just put comments here down below and I can help you out on that one if you want. And the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new virtual machine. Click create a resource. Machine. And click create. I'm just going to use a simple configuration here because the purpose of this video is not to teach you how to create VM, but it's more about how to set up the supposed so runtime. So VM1, I'm just going to take that one. I'm just going to use this image as a Windows. Uh, Self-hosted runtime only supports Windows uh, operating system, just for you know. Uh, if you want more details about it, check out my, the comment below, uh, the description below about the all the details or the best practices on to create a self-hosted runtime. I'm just going to keep this small size spec and just create my admin. You can set up your own. I'll just allow this RDP so that I can access it later. This, I'm just going to pick a standard SSD. Networking, I will set up a new VNet and assign a subnet where the VM will be hosted, basic NIC, allow RDP, yeah, for management. I'll just turn off anything that is not relevant, uh, like auto shutdown or boot diagnostic locks, and just click advance. And that's basically it. I'll just review and create. And I will create that. Now we'll skip to the end when the VM is created. Now my VM and its resources are created. I'm just going to go in to my resource group. I should have all these resources and we're just going to go into my VM. And click connect with RDP. I'll just use the public IP that we have and I just download the RDP file and open the file. We'll ask you uh, about this. That's fine. Connect. It will also ask you to log in. And I'll just use my admin account to log in. We'll 
also asks you about this certificate error. Just click yes. Now it should let you in and give you this. All right, I'm just going to skip through this because it's going to take a bit of time. After your VM fully boot up, you will get this view. And this is a view you get if you pick that operating system Windows Server 2019. I'm just going to click no to that, close this one. And the first thing you want to do is to actually click the local server here. And you want to turn off this IE enhanced security configuration. This is Internet Explorer security configuration. I'm just going to turn it off for the administrator. The reason why I want to, I'm doing this is because I want to download Chrome or Microsoft Edge browser locally. And if I had that on, uh, it, that wouldn't let me in. It also wouldn't let me to browse uh, many websites either. So it's not really helpful. So if I just click IE and E here, I'll just skip that one. I'm just now going to download Microsoft Edge. Except All right, I'm just going to skip this installation, assuming you uh, follow along and one and we'll come back when we're done. All right, now I have installed Microsoft Edge or you can install a browser, another browser like Chrome. Just so you know, the reason why I installed Microsoft Edge or maybe if you want to install Chrome is because Azure Portal is not supported on old Internet Explorer and this VM only has that. That's why I have to do it. Next thing you want to do, go to portal.com. When I'm inside my portal, I will just go to that resource group demo. And then I'm just going to my Azure Data Factory. I'm still within my VM, so you're aware. And now, once I'm in, I'll go to Manage, go to Integration Runtime, click New, and I'm going to create a new self-hosted runtime. I'll just name it what it is. When it's created, you have option the Express or the Manual. They both give you the same thing. I'll just use the Express one. Download me something like uh, this file. That is the, um, that's going to help me to install it. Now, what you want to do is once you install this, you just want to double click it and then you want to start the installation. When you click the file, it will start the installation using the express setup. This is how it looks like. And I'm just going to skip this through right to the end when it's completed. Now, this is the completed installation of the self-hosted runtime. And when I click close, close that one, and now should have a running integration runtime, self-hosted integration runtime. Thank you for joining me to the end of the video. This is how you set up a self-hosted runtime in Azure Data Factory. For further good practices on how to do this, check out the Microsoft documentation in the description below. As always, if you enjoyed the video, press that like button and also subscribe for more content like this. Until then, see you next time.